Hey everybody, it's Ricky Heller here from RickyHeller.com. I'm a holistic nutritionist and I help people on restricted diets learn to love their food so that they can get healthy and just get back to living their best lives. And so today, I think this might actually be my first live uh, Facebook Live on my business page, but I wanted to hop in because I've been seeing a lot of comments in my Living Candida Free Facebook group, um, which, is, which is a free group on Facebook, and as well as in my Sweet Life group, which is a membership club for people who are dealing with Candida. I've been seeing a lot of comments recently about this whole concept of cheating on the dog. Whoops! Whoops. <laughs> Lovely tripod. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I've been seeing a lot of comments about this whole concept of cheating on the diet and I think it's really important to take a closer look at that and some myths around the anti-candida diet that I think are really important to take a look at. So the first thing I wanted to mention is that I think we need to actually consider this as something other than just a diet. And when you think of a diet, for a lot of people, you think of something that is a, a, something you follow to lose weight. So that's the first thing where with the anti-candida diet, yes, you're gonna lose weight on an anti-candida diet, or at least most people do. I lost um, 45 pounds in my first year on the diet. But I don't want you to approach this as a weight loss diet because trust me, from someone who's been on every single weight loss diet out there, there are many easier ways to lose weight than to follow an anti-candida diet. The, Anti-Candida diet is a diet to restore health and to rid your body of excess candida. So if you're, if you're trying to approach this as a weight loss diet, you can find many, many other better diets. But I think the second thing that's really important is this whole concept of cheating on a diet. Because, you know, most of us who've been on a diet at some point cheat. And of course, the best advice is always get right back on. I totally agree with that. I think an anti-candida diet is a little bit different. Um, so just to give you an example, in, in my groups I've been getting a lot of comments like this one where someone might say, I have followed the anti-candida diet perfectly for a whole month and I'm kind of going crazy with it. I'm bored. I'm sick of eating the same foods. When can I start to reintroduce my old foods back to my diet? So that's one comment I see a lot. Another comment I see a lot is this whole concept of cheating where someone might say, I was perfect on the diet for four months and then I went out for my birthday and well, I cheated. I had a little piece of cake and I had a glass of wine. So what can I do now? My symptoms have come back. What can I do to get rid of them quickly? And I think in those cases, we need to take a slightly different approach to how we conceive of this diet and what it is and what it's doing. Because unlike a weight loss diet, a cheat on the anti-candida diet is something completely different. I think, first of all, we need to understand that candida is a formidable foe and things are changing in the world out there. More and more with research, we're finding that people who have candida overgrowth, there are many different strains now that we didn't consider in the beginning. It used to be all candida albicons. Now we have different strains of candida that are also affecting people. And even conventional medicine where doctors previously thought of fungal infections as basically an annoyance that you give a cream to your, to your patient and it gets better, now they're finding patients are coming back again and again and they're not getting better. So these are becoming more resistant. We even have now what they're calling a fungal superbug for the first time ever, a fungus, Candida auris, that is resistant to all three types of known antifungal drugs and a huge percentage of people in hospitals or with compromised immune systems who get this Candida auris die from it, it's up to 60%. So it's kind of acting like a bacterial superbug in some cases. So. I think we need to be aware that this is a serious organism that we're dealing with and so the concept of cheating is a little bit different and you need to approach it with a different perspective. As an example, if you had a deadly peanut allergy, let's say, would you ever consider even thinking about, well, I've, I haven't eaten peanuts for a whole year. It's my birthday. I'm going to have a few peanuts. What the heck? No, nobody in their right mind is going to do that. Similarly, if you're a recovering drug addict or alcoholic, you're never going to say, 
You know, I've avoided drugs and alcohol for so long now, and I'm just tired of doing it. I, I, it's New Year's Eve. I think I'm going to have some crack cocaine tonight. Of course not. So I want you to think of candida in that same category. It's a potentially deadly organism, and you need to avoid it not just most of the time, but 100% of the time. And I think for many people, that whole concept takes some getting used to, and you got to wrap your brain around it. And for me too, I have to say, I mean, I was on an anti-candida program for 10 years, feeling perfectly healthy. Everything was great. In fact, I was feeling so good, I cheated. And I went back to eating white flour and white sugar. I thought, oh, I can do this in moderation. And within three months, I was in my naturopath's office with what he said was the worst case of candida he had seen in his 20-something year career. So you can't just cheat and expect things to pick up where they left off when you go back to it. Candida will swoop in and take advantage. And I'm, I'm not saying this to be alarmist. I'm saying this so that people are aware that they're dealing with something that you really need to consider as a chronic condition. So the third thing related to sort of what I think of as myths around this whole candida diet is the concept that it's going to be something temporary. Um, for most people, this becomes a lifelong lifestyle once they get their candida under control. And you're feeling so great and you're so much better than you were with the candida. I'll tell you, in my case, it's easy to stick with it. But I know that for some people that takes some adjustment. And so that's what I do with people is I help them adjust to living this way and learn that you don't have to eat the same boring foods over and over every day. And you can be totally happy socializing and doing all the things that you would normally do in your life. I do think, yes, there are some people, a small percentage, let's say, I won't even guess, it's a small percentage of people who have a mild case of candida, they can clear their candida, and then they can go on to do a 90-10 or an 80-20 type of thing where they might be perfect on an anti-candida diet 80% of the time and 20% of the time they go back to having wine and sugar and all those kinds of things. But in my experience with seeing hundreds of people in my groups and clients um, who've had candida over the years, in my experience that does not happen to a lot of the people who do this. For most of us who clear our candida and get back to living a healthy life, we need to stay on a modified form of that diet for the rest of our days. And what that takes is adjusting to eating differently and like anything else, you get used to it and you learn all the tips and tricks and techniques for enjoying food that is actually good for you and will not feed the candida. And so um, for anybody who is has been struggling with this or is thinking about it but it just seems too daunting, I want to just let you know that I'm going to be running a learn to love stevia challenge which is kind of like a tiny little mini step on the way towards an anti-candida diet and so if you've tried to cut out sugar before even if you're not on an anti-candida diet if you've tried to cut out sugar or if you just want to eat more healthfully you could join our free challenge for learning to love stevia or stevia depending how you say it and uh, there will be a link I'm going to add a link to this video but I also um, will just tell you it's bit.ly slash love, all caps, the word love is in all caps, stevia challenge. And I hope to see you there because I think if you're going to beat your candida permanently, it is really imperative to learn to love your food just as much as you loved the food that made you sick in the first place. You know, I loved my Betty Crocker, I loved my Pringles, I love my donuts and chocolate and all those things. Nowadays, I, first of all, I cannot even imagine eating that stuff again, but I love the food I eat. And so I don't in any way feel deprived. And so if you're going to avoid cheating on the diet, if you're going to stick with this diet for the long term, which is what you need to maintain your health, think of it as a chronic condition like any other, then you need to learn to love the foods that you're able to eat that help your body heal and get you back to that healthy place. So I hope this was useful. I would love to answer any questions that people have. I don't know if any, um, if people have questions right now, you can just type them in the comments below, but I'll come back to the video and I will check and answer any questions that come up over the next couple of days. And as I said, I will also add the link to the Love Stevia Challenge because I think that's a huge leap for a lot of people when they're starting to eat sugar-free and 
I love stevia and I have lots of tips and tricks to show you so that you can love it too. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. And if you like the video, I'd love some hearts and please don't forget to leave any comments below. Thanks a lot. So have a great weekend. Bye.